Hey, my name is Sarah, and I'm a web designer at The Styled Square. The goal of this video is to help you get familiar with Squarespace 7.1 so you can update, build, and launch the website of your dreams. For this video tutorial, I'm working with our Bijou template, which can be purchased at thestyledsquare.com. Let's get started. From your Squarespace dashboard, click on your new site to start editing. Here on the side panel, we have our home menu. The home menu provides access to all admin areas of your site. Everything you need to build or manage your site can be found in this panel. In this video, we will focus on the three most important panels, pages, design, and settings. In pages, you can add, remove, or reorder pages. To add a page, click the plus button. For a regular page, you can choose a blank page to create your own layout. If you'd like to add a blog, store, portfolio, or events page, you can find them under Collections. To create a drop-down menu in your navigation, select Folder and drag the pages you'd like included in said folder. To add a page to your main navigation, place it here. To create a page which is hidden from the website navigation, simply drag the page under Not Linked. To edit page settings, hover over the page and click the cogwheel on the right. Here there are important settings like page title, slug, SEO, etc. The design menu is your hub for design. Here you can control your site styles, add a browser icon, customize your checkout page, and more. In this video, we'll focus on site styles. When you click site styles, a sidebar will appear on the right. This is where you update fonts, colors, button styles, animations, and more. Let's update the fonts throughout the website. At the top, we have options for pre-made font pairings. These are suggestions for fonts that complement each other, which is great if you're not a designer and don't know where to start. So you can play around with these suggestions or you can customize your fonts based on your branding. To customize the heading font, click here. Here you can choose a new font. You can also play around with font weight, line height, letter spacing, and text transform. Now repeat this step with your paragraph text, buttons, and miscellaneous text. Once the fonts are updated, it's time to implement your brand colors. To update the palette, click on the rectangle with the preset colors here. To set your colors, click on the circle you'd like to change, Click on the custom color drop down, and here you can pick from pre made color palettes or you can add a custom hex code. If you want to pull colors from images, you can upload an image and pick your color of choice. Once you've set your color palette, you will see that the color themes update under Section Themes. These color themes are used on your page sections to update all the on-page elements to these specific colors. If we take a look at our website, we can see that every section is assigned a color theme. Under section themes, you can update all the colors for specific elements in specific sections. Here's a brief overview of the other options under Site Styles. Animations animates the site elements as they appear on the page. Buttons controls the button style, shape, and padding. You can set different styles for all three different buttons. Back in Design, there are a few other options. To add a a fave icon or browser icon to your website, upload it in browser icon. You can also customize your lock screen, checkout page, 
404 page, and more. The last option is custom CSS. Here you can add code snippets to customize your site. You'll notice that our templates include some coding. This is how we create truly unique templates. I recommend leaving these alone unless we've specified changes in the directions which come with your template. Let's move on to settings. To make sure this video doesn't drag on, I'm going to focus on the key settings you will need to build and launch your website. Site availability is where you control who your site is available to. You can set it as public, password protected, or private. You will need to sign up for a Squarespace subscription to have your site public and live. Business information allows you to add your contact information and business hours. This is great for SEO. In social links, add links to your social media accounts. When someone clicks on the Instagram icon, it will direct them to your page. Connected accounts connects social accounts to your website and allows to pull data. For example, updating the live Instagram feed that lives on your website. Permissions allows you to invite contributors to work on your site. Domains allows you to buy a domain directly off Squarespace. And finally, billing an account allows you to upgrade your subscription when you're ready to go live. Now that we understand the back end of Squarespace 7.1, Let's move on to the website builder. To edit your page, click edit. First off, you can edit your site header. To do so, click the edit site header button. Under site title and logo, you can update your site title to your business name and upload your logo here. Below, there's an alternate logo option for mobile. This logo will show up on your mobile, mobile site only. To play around with elements in the navigation, click on Elements. Here you can decide to show or hide elements in your navigation, such as button, cart icon, etc. Style controls the overall look of your navigation. Theme is associated with the section color themes. There are other options like gradient or dynamic you can choose to explore. Fixed position will make your navigation sticky, meaning it will move down the page when you scroll. The computer icon controls the desktop settings. Here you can play around with the header layout and update settings like vertical padding, element spacing, and link spacing. The phone icon controls the mobile site settings. Choose your layout, overlay menu styles, menu icon, and more. With the Fluid Engine update, we can drag and drop elements, layer them, and place them however we like. As you can see, this page is already designed. For this example, I will create a new section below the homepage header and walk you through how it works. To create a new section, scroll to the bottom of the section and click on Add Section button. Here, you will see pre-made section templates created by Squarespace. You can choose to add a section template or add a blank section. I will add a blank section. To change the section settings, hover over the section and click Edit section. Under Format, we can control the Fluid Engine grid for the drag and drop builder. Row count controls how many rows in the section. We can also adjust the row count by clicking and dragging the icon at the bottom of the section. Gap controls the space between the Fluid Engine blocks. Section height controls the margins on the top and bottom of the section. If we want to create a section that spans the full height, 
click the three dots and replace the one with zero. And this will ensure that our content can span the full height of the section. In the background tab, you can upload a background image or video for the section. Colors controls the section themes, as I mentioned earlier. Remember when you set the color palette in site styles? Well, this is where you can pick from any, of, any one of those preset color themes from the design menu. You can move the sections up and down using these arrows, and you can also delete the section by clicking the trash icon. Let's get to building. To add content to a section, click Add Block button on the top left. This will prompt you to add an element. Let's add an image. Click the image and drag it where you'd like to place it. A quick tip with images, under Design, you have three options, Fit, Fill, or Shape. Fit retains the original image dimensions when you drag the element by the corner. Fill will prompt the image to change to whatever dimension you choose in the drag and drop builder. For our templates, we recommend always using fill to retain the original design. When you upload a new image, you may have to toggle fit and then fill um, once or twice to get the fill effect. Shape will help you create a circular or arched shaped image. I'm also going to add a text box to our section. Notice how we have four heading options and three paragraph options. This will give us a lot of flexibility with text. You can change the color of your text by highlighting it and selecting a color here. I'll also add a button. To edit a specific element, hover over it and click the pen icon. This will give you a variety of options depending on the element. For the button, we have three different button style options that can be set in site styles. We can also use fit or fill. Fit is a set button size, while fill will adjust the button height and width by dragging, by dragging the corners of the button. We can select multiple elements by holding down shift, clicking on the elements, and then dragging them. Let's create a split screen quickly. First, I'll go to my section settings and choose the row size without padding. Then I'll update the section height to the minimum by clicking the three dots and updating one to zero. Then I'll drag the image that I added previously to take up half of the screen move the text and button, and there you go, a split screen in seconds. With the Fluid Engine Builder, you can overlap items and place them however you like. You can also move an element forward by clicking this icon. You can span elements the full width of the section. To edit the footer, click the Edit Footer button. Here, you'll use the same drag and drop style to create your footer. Take your time getting to know the new builder. In the end, you'll see that it's much easier than the original classic style. Drag and drop, it's that easy. With the Fluid Engine release in July of 2022, we now have more control over our mobile website than ever with Squarespace. To edit your mobile layout, click Edit and navigate to the phone icon on the right. We can now drag and drop elements similar to the desktop layout. The changes you apply to mobile will generally not update your desktop layout. There are a few exceptions like the alignment of text and buttons. If you change the text alignment from left to center, 
It will apply to both desktop and mobile. With the purchase of a template, the mobile layout will already be designed for you. Updating the images and text on desktop will also update the content on mobile. However, you may need to tweak the mobile design depending on the content. Let's create a section in the desktop version and update it for mobile. I'm quickly going to create a browse section with three images to illustrate this. I'm going to add three images and text. Once the section is ready on desktop, I'll edit it on mobile. Here we can see that the images are not all the same size and that the text placement is incorrect. As a rule of thumb, elements on the left of the desktop will be stacked above the items on the right. This is important to organize the images and text in the right order on mobile. If the section is too short, you can always extend the grid by dragging it. I always prefer to make this section very tall and then resize it once the content is placed. Let's take a look at desktop versus mobile. Looks great. Adding content to your blog and portfolio is a very similar process. The portfolio pages have less options, however, they function in a similar way as the blog. To add a blog post, navigate to Pages and then click on your blog. To add a blog post, click the plus icon. Now add the post title and content. You can also add images and other elements using the drag and drop builder. This isn't the most intuitive thing, but to further edit the blog post settings, click here on the header. This will give you more options, such as setting tags and categories, allowing comments, SEO, etc. Under options, you can upload the blog thumbnail image and adjust the post URL. The blog thumbnail image is the image that will show up as the cover on the live blog or portfolio page. You can also add an excerpt here. Once you're done, click apply. Navigate to done in the right hand corner and either save or publish or schedule your post. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I answered your questions about Squarespace 7.1. Be sure to check out our premium website templates at thestyledsquare.com and happy website building.